runter vom Wagen! Rauf auf den Berg! Und los! Welcher Frick! Welcher Frick! Wenn der Town kommen, der Dobrykun, und ein Attempt hat been made on the Reichskommissar's life, there will arise for 15 civilian hostages from the district of Telemark to be shot in reprisal. Like the look of it, gentlemen? Most interesting. We are well informed of what you do here, Herr Nielsen. A little experimentation with heavy water, that's all. With deuterium oxide. Yes, yes, we know. Nielsen, I must tell you, the time has come to make a decisive transition from theory to practice. You've done enough experimentation, my dear fellow. This room has more significance for us than you can possibly realize. Well, one day, perhaps, you will realize. What you think, gentlemen? Forget about fertilizers. This factor is acquired by the Reich to increase its production of heavy water by 400%. We want 10,000 pounds of heavy water by Easter next year. That's impossible. It's not at all impossible, Herr Nielsen. What is necessary will always be accomplished. All the more so when the whole future of the Reich is at stake. All the technical details have been worked out in Berlin. Here, take a look. 
And notice also our modification of the deuterium formula. But what is the reason? Uh, I don't understand. That was a firing squad, my dear Nielsen. Let it be a warning. Major Frick here will be in charge of security. And it will be the maximum. Stupid fool. Peterson. No, I'm sorry, he's busy. He's working in the dark hall. Hey, you can't go barging on Professor Peterson, you know. How long is he likely to be there? Could be there all afternoon. Huh. I'll wait for him. Shut that door. What the hell do you think you're doing? Can't you see the red lights on? I'm sorry. I'd like to speak to you. Don't you know the damage you can do barging into a dark room with the signal lights on? I've got to give you a message. All right, I'll uh, be in touch. Now, what do you want? Come from Telemark, near the Norse Hydro Factory. I didn't ask where you were born. Come from Chief Engineer Nielsen. He wants your opinion on something. He says only you would understand it. Understand what? The message. It's in here. What's this, some sort of student joke? <laughs> it's not a joke, and I'm no student. It contains an undeveloped photographic negative. Open it. Who are you? I'm Knut Stroud. I used to work on the sawmills, but now I fight Nazis. One of those. Back to your sawmill. I'm not interested in your messages. My work is here. You understand? I've just seen you at your work. I'd rather embrace one Norwegian than kill a dozen a day, friend. Look at this. Every time you people play Boy Scouts and blow up a few Nazi trucks, 12 hostages are shot. That's your great work? Keep it. Get out of here and take your toothpaste with you. A lot of boy scouts risk their lives to get this to you.
must get to England. Name? Jan Christus. Adresse? 46 Königstraße, Trondheim. Also, Sie fahren jetzt nach Trondheim. Ja. London. They're expecting us. How are we for fuel? <laughs> I'm sorry. My, my wife is a little clumsy. No, no, it's my fault. How far are you going? Christian son, further up? As far up as you'll go. How far will she go? We'll make it. I've counted 12 in the crew and eight passengers plus for Quisley. All we need now is a little fog and the trolls on our side. Don't tell me a big boy like you bleeds in trolls. Doctor, press this little thing here, and there the bullets come out there. Taking over the ship in the name of the Royal Norwegian Government. This ship's going to England. Like hell it is. You've got a choice. Sail under the King of Spree, men, or be prisoners for the rest of the war. ship in the name of the king. Look out! Quisling bastard. Says him right. What can we do for you? Give us a hand. Ladies and gentlemen, there is uh, nothing to be alarmed about. There's just been a slight change in our itinerary. Now, instead of going up the coast to Christensen, be going to England. Now or never, Captain.
Who's? You'll never get across the North Sea alive. Enemy planes will spot you. That's the chance we're going to take. There are mines, thousands of them. And neither the British nor the Germans happen to have given us a map. <laughs> you believe in the trolls? Oh, yes, he does. Well, so do I, providing we have a sharp lookout. England, Captain? South. Southwest. South, southwest, sir. Thank you, Captain. She trying to blow us up. Get that pole. Pull us down. Pull us down, sir. Hang on this line. If you want to play billiards with a mine, remember my job is to get you safely to London. Pass me, sir. What the devil is heavy water? It's a liquid with a heavier hydrogen structure than ordinary water. 
It also possesses properties useful in the study of atomic energy. Yes, but what's the significance of the Germans ordering this vast increase in the stuff? In the formula that Nielsen sent me, the Germans have added a new component to the accepted equation. Look, I'd rather wait till that formula's been examined by uh, Professor Einstein and Dr. Oppenheimer in New York. But, Professor, surely it's something more than just a doubt that brought you all the way to England. It is. It's a very great fear. And if it's justified, uh, you'll know about it soon enough. Would you mind? Thank you so much. This is Professor Sir Roderick Logan, gentlemen. Gentlemen, <clears throat> perhaps I should tell you, or perhaps I should not tell you, but we have just come from a very brief and equally a very painful session with the Prime Minister on this. Ah. Right. Well, at any rate, here is the report that came from Washington this morning. Following their initial reading of the data brought by Dr. Peterson from Norway, um, plus certain other indicators, incidentally, Professors Einstein, Fernie, and Oppenheimer concurring, the scientific and military consensus in America is that the Germans may be ahead of us in the race to achieve controlled atomic fission. They are ahead, and they get their atomic bomb. They won the war. Ah, there you are, Knud. How are you? Come in. Come on in, Mr. Stride. Come on in, take care. Thank you. We've examined the situation very carefully, and it's been agreed in London and Washington that the factory making heavy water must be destroyed without delay. Personally, I agree with you, Bill, that bombing is, in this instance, the most obvious method. Right. At the same time, we wish, if we can, to avoid large-scale civilian death. This is also clearly the wish of the Norwegian government. I suggest, gentlemen, that Dr. Peterson, who knows what's at stake, and Mr. Stroud, who knows his country backwards, be asked to return immediately to Telemark in order to resolve this question. That is, to determine, with objectivity, whether a ground attack by commandos is practical or not. Agreed? Agreed. How do we get back to Norway? The simplest way, by parachute. Of course. 
but I know where we are. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yes, if you're a reindeer. Where do we go from here? I'm taking it to one of my radio operators. He's a contact with London. Farmhouse. Another one of my operators. this place. Oh, Knut Stroud. <laughs> oh, come in. Hi. How are you? Fine. Wonderful to see you. Hello, Anna. Good God, what are you doing here? Well, just dropped in for a cup of coffee. Uncle! Uncle! What is it? Ralph is here. Oh, damn. Hello, Uncle. Oh, Ralph, what on earth are you doing here? Oh, Mr. Strive, it's always good to see you. Oh, you know each other, too. Yes, we've met. Oh, what a surprise. I uh, had no idea you were all such good friends. Had you? Listen, I think you'd better know that we've put you in some danger by coming here. What? Well, we're working for the resistance. You? You're not serious. Well, you got me into it. Was that wise, Knut? Oh, you seem to know each other quite well. Oh, everybody knows everybody here. Let me uh, introduce you to my ex-wife. We have some coffee now, Anna? I have no time for coffee. I'm working for the resistance. Now, we both can't be working for the resistance. It's ridiculous. Oh, you look terrible. She's been dragging me around the Vita for two days. There's some pajamas and hot water upstairs. <clears throat> you two would better go along up to the bedroom. I am. Uh... I take it you know the way. Yeah, I know the way. Follow me. Thank you. It's odd, isn't it, to have him in the house again? What's odd about it? You and he shared the same bed for two years, and as far as I remember, you damn seldom got out of it.
You should be asleep. Oh, I, I just thought I'd drop in. Go in the line of duty. To discuss uh, resistance tactics with a fellow fighter. By the way, how is your resistance these days? Hmm? Fine. How's yours? Mine? Well, it wasn't great until I met that uh, boy scout, Knut Stroud. Well, I was content. I had a good life. And now, look where I am. Yes, it's exhausting to commit yourself to others. You still commit yourself beautifully? Like you always did. I'm not your wife now. Anybody's wife. Depends. Sure. Yes, you would like that, wouldn't you? You mean you would? You know what you were born for. No. Yes, you know what you were born for. No. Tell me. Say those things to me. You always have it out of my head. You're the same. You matter. Yes. You are. But you've got the words wrong, Rolf. You see? It's not so easy. Seducing your ex-wife. Students are much easier, aren't they? I just don't believe in you anymore. Please go. Please. our main transmitter hut. Can't risk the farm. It's getting too dangerous. I'll make sure that Nielsen is at the church this morning. Good. Uncle, be careful. The town is full of Germans. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Uncle. See you in church. Merry Christmas. I've got a message for you for Marty. He's in England. He's fine. Will you see him again? 
Tell him I have a message for him, too. He'll be a father in the spring. have their 10,000 pounds of heavy water by Easter. The marker, microfilm of the factory, exact details. Ammonia and hydrogen pipes. You can see how close it is to the village. Look how near the factories to their homes. Look at the rabbit. Excuse me. I don't think I've seen you in the weekend before. Who are you? Well, I've come to uh, to visit my fiance for Christmas. I see your fiance. How very charming indeed. And what is his name? Well, my name. I am asking her. Uh, Jan Christensen. Mm-hmm. Let me see your identity card, please. Certainly. Excuse me. Huh? Your uh, text, I believe? <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Auf Wiedersehen. Oh, and uh, the compliments of the season to uh, both of you.
How did you like our town, Rolf? Oh, I like it. You should have seen the torchlight parades we used to have. Yes, every November. It was wonderful. Flaming torches. You could see it for miles away up in the mountain. The snow was whiter then. Yes. It was all the lights on the snow. Then we made snowballs and threw them at the torches. Remember, Knut? Detail layout of the factory. Well, they've got 3,000 pounds of heavy water in there right now, ready to be shipped to Germany. Well, let's decide on what message we send to London. There's only one message. Examine the area. Consider ground attack totally impractical. Recommend alternate methods. You mean to bomb it? Yes. That would destroy Rukan and everybody in it. Possibly. Bombing is impossible. The factory is deeply embedded in a gorge. The only way across that gorge is a narrow bridge 75 feet long. Two men with machine guns could hold off a battalion. I can get inside that factory with 10 men. 10 men! And blow it sky high! They've got 88 millimeter guns on every hill. And without destroying an entire village in the process. Barbed wire. Landmines. 6,000 lives. Do you realize... I'll keep out of this. talking about something that affects the world. Look, I don't if... give a damn about the world. I'm talking about my town, her town, his town. Now, we live there. I'm talking about people. Do you understand that? People! You weren't so squeamish when hostages were being shot. They're people. This is a hell of a lot more important than blowing up a few Nazi trucks. Fighting a war, Doctor, and I was doing my job. And I'm doing mine. I don't like it. And I didn't ask for it. You live here, it's natural. You want to save your own people's lives, but this is something that has to be done. It's important. Important enough to kill 6,000 people? Yes. Look, I want to know what's so important about heavy water. I don't make the rules. I can't tell you. I want to know, Doctor, and you're going to tell me. I'm telling you nothing. Do you think that I'm going to sacrifice the lives of 6,000 people on the opinion of a playboy scientist? Or for what? I want to know, Doctor, and you're going to tell me. You want to know what it's all about? All right. I'll tell you. That's what it's all about. You understand? Of course you're not so stupid. Why you? We're here to fight the Nazis. Why don't you both send in reports and let London decide? All right. Fine. Sienna, 
Suit and I fight, but we still manage to live with each other. I know you fellows are anxious to get back to Norway. Knut Stroud and Rolf Peterson are on the mountains of Telemark waiting for you. The main assault group, the Royal Engineers Commando, will come in two or three days, weather permitting. We are counting on you to get a glider landing strip on the lake ready for them. Well, happy landings and best of luck. Okay. We've been looking for you halfway around the Arctic Circle. What are you talking about? We're waiting for your message for the past five weeks and it hasn't come. Oh, <laughs> I'm starving. We're expecting more company tomorrow. Yeah, 50 British commandos. From the Royal Engineers. What? They land tomorrow night. I've got a message for you from Sigrid. You're going to have a baby in the spring. <laughs> How is she? She's pregnant. <laughs> My name is Jensen. What do you want? I'm on a hunting trip. Hunting for what? You better come with us. I won't say a word, ever, on my honor. Look, my village is Hokalai. Anyone there will tell you who I am. Listen, I hate the Nazis, believe me. My wife is in a Gestapo prison. Listen, listen, her father's name is Jon Trend. That's why she's in prison. Trend. The resistance leader? Yes. It fits. Shoot him. No will keep him. You can't risk the whole organization because of one man. I'm with Connot. And me. I think Rolf is right. So do I. We'll have a show of hands. Those against shooting him. We'll have your skis. Take them off.
Listen. I still can't believe it. They weren't even Norwegian. Fifty British commandos. In a flash, the whole operation's over. Waste. That's what I can't get out of my head. They're not going to be wasted. We're going ahead. Tonight. Now. As if they were with us. It's the same plan. We all know it. What are you talking about? We're going to get into that factory and complete the mission ourselves. Kenneth, I'm sorry, but you're mad. There's only nine of us left. We'd better wait. We can't wait. It'll be months before they can mount an assault on the same scale. But, Knut, if we... It's our only chance. If we win, those men won't have died for nothing tonight. There were 50 of them. Only nine of us. You won't even be nine. What do you mean? I'm sorry, but I'm not going on such an impossible mission. Oh, yes, you are, Ralph. You're coming with us. You're the only one who knows exactly where that dynamite must be placed. Oh, look, Knut, after what happened tonight, that factory's gonna be jumping with guards. He's right. Now, listen. Listen to me. They have completely wiped out our entire assault force, right? Now they'll be feeling completely safe. You don't have a chance in the world. Look, 50 men died tonight. They came here to help us. They weren't even Norwegian. Now, who's coming with me tonight? It's 10 to 12. This is a military operation launched by the British. We'll wear British uniforms so the Germans won't shoot Norwegian hostages afterwards. Place at 3.15. Arn, you and Heinrich will be our cover party. You'll move forward and cut a hole in the fence. The actual demolition party will consist demolition of... Demolition party will consist of Knut, Ali, and myself. Jensen. Inside.
Draußen ist kalt. Gut, Schmidt. Ich bin warm angezogen.
Hello. Hello. Let's get out of here. My glasses. My glasses. I lost my glasses. They're on top of your head.
Well, gentlemen, your next mission is to find out how neutral Sweden is, especially the girls. <laughs> Where's Arne? Down in the gorge. Let's get going. The beetle will be swarming with Germans in half an hour. Is it not, my dear Nielsen? An extraordinary job, one might say, of sabotage. Or oh, naturally, you had no knowledge of this. Destruction, sabotage, waste. All this is against your thrifty, scientific nature. Is it not, Nielsen? In that case, answer me this. How long will it take before production gets back into high gear again? A year at least. First, new containers have to be built, a new store of heavy water accumulated, before production flows at full speed. A year, he says. What do you think we Germans have been doing? Sleeping? What do you think your two friends from the Berlin Institute have been doing since they went home? Playing golf? Oh, the Wettish fancy themselves very much after what they've done here. Winston Churchill is popping an extra big cigar today. And we laugh at him. Why? Because all these containers, which the British did so much to destroy, have already been prefabricated in Berlin. They are already on their way here and will be installed by tomorrow. That is. I must say that is fantastic efficiency. Don't you ever make the mistake of underrating the Germans, my dear Nielsen. By Easter, we will have not merely 10,000 pounds of heavy water, but 12,000 pounds of heavy water. Because from now on, no one leaves this building, not you or anybody, unless it's to go to Greeny concentration camp, but where I all suspect employees protest are being this. Protest as much as you wish. But get used to the idea. You built this place. Well, you will now work in it, eat in it, and sleep in it until our victory. Heil Hitler. Major Frick, this is one of the most disastrous security breakdowns of the entire war, and you are responsible for it. I leave you in charge of the only factory in Europe making heavy water, and a dozen men in British uniforms calmly walk in and blow it up right in front of your eyes. So, get up into those mountains and get back every one of those men, dead or alive. And if it turns out they're Norwegians, I want a hundred hostages rounded up and shot. I don't want even a rat left alive up there. Go on, get out. Fertig machen, abbrechen, einsteigen, abfahren. Auf die Fernkabel mit voller Ausrüstung. You say you can take us to them. You'd better be telling the truth. You keep your part of the bargain. I'll keep mine. You were right. You just shut that cruise and get it.
Ballung frei, runter, Teute! Der Rest folgt mir nach. Down that side. Why? My wife. Your wife. What the hell do you mean, your wife? I made a bargain with the Nazis. I was helping track down the saboteurs. I I got hurt in the foot. Then you'd better come with us. Dailong, forwards. Dailong, halt. Wegtreten. Saboteurs going to Greeny concentration camp. I, I think I better go see my doctor. Thanks for your help. Hey, wait a minute. 
We have a doctor right here now. Come and see him. I think I, I'd rather see my own if, it, if it's all the same to you. Oh, nonsense. Our doctor will look after you for nothing. Why pay a civilian? Who is this fella? One of the men helping our patrols. If he's helping us, we must help him. Thank you. That's only fair, isn't it? Nasty. We better have that scene, too. I shall fear! I think we've got another passenger for your bus. Doctor? You remember me? No, I don't. We met at the university, Dr. Pettison. I'm afraid you're mistaken, madam. You know this man? No, I... I thought I did, but I don't know. You know him? What did you say his name was? No, I... Please, I... I don't know him. His papers say his name is Christensen. What was it you said his name was? His name! My name is Dr. Rolf Peterson, University of Oslo. Stop at headquarters, no doubt. We'll be delighted to confirm. Doctor. I'm so sorry. Peterson. Pe Peterson, not Peterson. I'm very proud of my name. Uh, let me help you here. Oh, here it is. Peterson, Ralph, Doctor of Physics, leave the escape to England. To England? Well, even the Gestapo can be wrong sometimes. <laughs> How long will it be, Doctor? Got to leave here. You hear me, Doctor? I can't stay here long. I don't know who you are, and I don't want to know, but if you leave here, you'll be arrested. And so will I, and my staff. You will therefore please stay here until I make the arrangements. I told you I don't want you using that transmitter set. I'm trying to contact London. They must know where but Ralph I is. I can't risk it. Why don't you go out and try to find him then? Because I'm not a member of the Missing Persons Bureau. I can't jeopardize the whole operation. I'm a bad ex-wife, Knut. Why? Because you love him? Yes. You haven't much use for that, have you? Not in this sort of war. It softens you up. But sex, that's something different. 
It seems Rolf makes the same distinction. But you don't, do you, Anna? Get some wood. They're in this area somewhere. You understand? That transmitter remains silent until I give the order. Now you see, Anna, that's what I was talking about. Friend of yours is here. Room seven down the corridor. Secret. Hello, Dr. Patterson. Thought you were locked up in the factory. We are. Unless we're very ill. Or having a baby. Something that I've got Nelson to Nelson found out you were here. Listen to me. I've got to tell you about Anna. I know. The Germans have installed new containers. So heavy water production is at full level again. See you later. When can you deliver the message? to contact London. Why? What's the matter? The Nazis have completely restored heavy water production. What? Instead of two years, it's taken them two weeks. We're right back where we started.
I'm afraid we'll have to take his appendix out. In that case, one of our security officers must remain with him. Day and night until he leaves. Then I shan't be lonely. By the way, Doctor, how are Sigrid and her baby coming along? Oh, excellent. As a matter of fact, she's bringing him here this afternoon for a checkup. I'd love to see her. No one is allowed to communicate with Nielsen, Doctor. Sixty-seven civilians killed, factory virtually untouched, the Nazis... Well, the Third Reich is going to last for a thousand years. Well, let's all go down into Rukan, have a good Nazi dinner, see a nice Nazi film. Rose. Let's start getting used to it. The Nazis are shipping their entire stock of heavy water to Germany. A rail and ferry under the guard of a thousand picked troops. The railway tank cars will leave the factory Saturday evening, be placed on the hydro ferry Sunday morning. And Nielsen had to lose a perfectly good appendix to deliver that message. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Maybe now. The very moment we've all dreaded when they take the stuff to Germany. By ferry. This is where we finally get them. But Rolf, a thousand picked troops. But there's one place you can't use a thousand picked troops. Don't you want to do a little dying with me? I've just thought up a nice way to go. It left at nine o'clock. Yes, and it's got to be the deepest point, at least three, four hundred meters. Now, 9.45. You know what we're talking about. Yes, we're talking about murder. Why two clocks? If one doesn't go off, the other will. It will sink the ferry in less than a minute. It has to be done, Anna. It's all been calculated, hasn't it, Rolf? Nothing left to chance. Not even the hope that one of the children on that boat isn't going to drown. Now look, Anna. Try and get into your head. What counts is not who's going to die on the ferry, but how many millions will be saved the ferry sunk. A nice equation, Rolf. Put it on the blackboard and sign it. It's not a nice equation. I didn't invent it. It exists. Yeah, so do people, Rolf. People exist, too. What the hell are we doing here if it isn't for people? You don't do things for people. Ralph, you never have. Look, Anna, this work is tough enough even without you. One day, after the war, a woman is going to come and ask why her child had to be drowned. I won't know the answer. It's as simple as this. We have no choice. What are you going to say to that woman, Rolf? The radio of the Norwegian government in London. Tell them the plan, all its risks. Prime Minister the King. The whole lot. Then, if they approve... At least we've shared the responsibility. Watson. 
It's contact none. Number one truck reports a contact on 247 degrees. Contact 73 degrees. West, southwest, not more than six kilometers from here. All right, Heine. <laughs> Shut that door, will you? Oh, that's better. I'm glad you think so. Stand up! Back in two hours, don't wait for us. You hear any shots? Leave immediately.
There's nine minutes left. You'd better go on to the boathouse with Knut. Why are you going? I've got to see that that ferry leaves on time. Then I'll cut across the point and join you. Be careful. I will. The explosion time is 9.45. We won't make a move until then. Papiere. Tickets? I'll have to pay. Tickets.
Doctor, what a nice surprise. I want you to understand. I don't think you've met little Arnie. There we are. Sigrid, listen to me. Sigrid! So, you've met a friend, eh? Yes. Well, this is Mr. Sanson and his wife and their little boy. Sigrid, I've got to Why talk don't you come and join once. us over here? Alone. Come on, Dad. We've brought some sandwiches. Would you excuse us, please? <laughs> I'm sorry, Mrs. Sanderson. Secret, I want you to start a children's game on the back of the boat. Game? Uh, as far back as you can. What sort of game? Well, let's call it life jackets. Everybody puts one on. When I say go, the uh, winner gets a bar of chocolate. Now what? Is Rolf. It's only a couple of minutes. If he doesn't come in time, we'll have to go out and do what we can without him. I don't want to play. Oh, sure you do. You want to play? Sure you do. It's a bar of chocolate. Now, you ready? Oh, your doll's cold. <laughs> you ready? Set? Go! Secret on board the ship. And Ralph. Ralph said as well. Last thing you ever do, forget. I thought. 